Hello there. Welcome to D-Light Channel. Timak is my name. And as usual, I'm very glad to have you here this week. And what are we to do this week? We are to continue our conversation around change and change management. This is about the third video now. So if you missed anything, please go back and watch. Because over these last two videos, we have tried to define what changes. We have tried to identify the triggers that drive change, whether it's an individual or it's corporate, and we identified a few. And then we started something last week that spoke about change management, which is all that you need to do to ensure that when change happens, you always land on the positive side and your objectives are achieved. And last week, we identified the first variable, which is that in managing change, you need to be aware that change goes through three broad phases. The first phase is the unfreeze, the second is the change, and the third is the freeze. Now, that being said, this week, let's take the conversation a bit further. So, what happens in the unfreeze? What happens in the change? And what happens in the refreeze? It's a bit complicated and tangled. It will take a couple of weeks, but let me quickly give you an overview of what this series will look like. So what I will try to do, which I think probably will make more sense is, let's identify the activities that are involved in the change management process. There are seven of them. Then when I've done with identifying it, I will then tell you which one happens under change, which one happens under on freeze and which one happen under refreeze and then i will be in a position to let you know for each of these phases what are the things you can do as the entrepreneur or as a change leader or as a change manager to ensure that you have a good navigation from one of these phases to the other to the other to the other does that make sense Okay, so let's go slowly now. Let me start by pointing out that there are seven steps that are involved in the chain management process which you need to be aware of. Okay, number one, you need to identify what exactly needs to change. This is foundational. This is fundamental. Why? Because sometimes we miss the point. Sometimes when, a, when somebody has a headache, it is not just the headache. The headache is a symptom of something more fundamental. A friend of mine re reported recently how, while she was having persistent headache and trying to treat and wasn't going, just a casual MIR scan revealed that she had tumor in her brain. And she had to undergo like two or three surgeries. Now, imagine if she didn't go the extra mile to establish what exactly is the root cause. She probably will be swallowing headache pills until she'll probably just drop dead one day. And everybody will be wondering, how can ordinary headache kill somebody? Therefore, when you are dealing with change, please don't be cursory, don't be casual, don't be flippant about it. Take time to try to establish what exactly needs to change. This is what Nokia did not do. In 2007, when Apple launched iPhone, Nokia had a, a, an overwhelming commanding lead in the market. From the volume of sales, to the range of products, to the global spread, to affiliation with networks, to the control of the distribution process, to the control of the manufacturing process, just name it, everything was advantage Nokia. But Nokia missed the point. What was the point? Apple changed the rules of the game. Rather than trying to manufacture a phone, Apple tried to manufacture a smart device that can complement the lifestyle of the user, but that can also make a telephone call. Meanwhile, Nokia was trying to make a better telephone. 
And for many years, if you go read the history, read the case, and I like to use this because right in our presence, these things have happened so we can relate with them. If you read the history, you will notice that Apple, I mean, Nokia didn't fold his hand while all this was developing. It was also trying to respond, but the response was, was up the wrong ladder. They were trying to now copy and manufacture their own handset that will be all touchscreen, there will be no keyboard, which was one of the, by the way, one of the popular things with that, with that particular brand. And they kept missing it until four or five years later, they were overtaken by Nokia. And today, the rest is history. So, when it comes to change management, the very first thing is, know what needs to change. How do you do this? Get your people together. Don't be careless about it. Don't be cursory about it. Don't be flippant about it. Don't be casual about it. Do all that you can. Bring the best brain you can afford in your business together. Ask questions. Right now, with the help of social media, you don't even need to go so far before you are able to find out what is going on. That's why they say it's no longer a world of research and development. It's now a world of connect and deploy. The message is out there. Do surveys, ask questions, listen into all the conversations. You will realize what the market wants and then go to the root cause. Identify what the root cause is and fix it. Let that be the change agenda. That way you minimize the rigma rolling. That way you minimize the cost. That way you shorten the time. That way you minimize the toll on the human being. And we'll deal with the human side down the line because change is about human beings. That is the bigger part of it. If you are changing equipment, your life is straightforward. So, number one rule, let the thing that needs to change be very clear to everybody that needs to play a role in that change management journey. Once the journey, once the objective is clear, once the objective is very well established with everybody that needs to run it, you will have taken a major step in that direction. This is where I will have to end it this week because unfortunately, I do not want this series to be long. Next week, we'll move on to step number two and I will take it step by step until I come back to tell you how it fits into the flow and then tell you what you can do in each phase to ensure that you have a steady journey as you go through. Believe me, chain management is not a walk in the park, but if you do it well, it could be your most potent and effective competitive advantage. Thanks for being here once again this week. I look forward to seeing you here next week as we count down to the end of the year. Every video this series, I'm going to be asking you this question. Have you evaluated 2018? Have you identified the gap? Have you started working on what you want to do differently in 2019? Remember that the reason why we are here is how we can help you to start living your dream very soon. So feel free to reach out for any help you may require so that you can be very purposeful and very direct as you wind down 2018 and start 2019 by the grace of God. So until I see you next week, please feel free to send us some love. Share this everywhere you, you know that people need to, 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 to see this and hear this. And if there's anything that you want to contribute or you want us to touch on, please send us feedback via any of our channels. We'll be, we'll be out there waiting to read from you. And until I come your way next week, don't ever forget that t Mark is still my name. And all I'm trying to do is what? Make a little difference. See you next week and bye.